Is there somebody that's excited about that your God is Lord over all? 
you would tune your ears. Turn your ears on. You will find that the world would say somebody else is God. The Bible says there's going to be prophets that come in his name, but they can't perform the things that he does. They can't do the things that he does. He can't, they can't bring you out of the things that God can bring you out. And so today, as a living witness, I'm going to shout that he's Lord. Does anybody want to shout that he's Lord? We declare it in here that he's Lord. He's Lord over my sickness. He's Lord over my job. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you. I think that, just stick, stick there. I think that's got it, though. Amen. Amen. Before we dismiss, you may be seated. Before we dismiss classes, let me, let me talk to you real briefly. All right, real briefly before. Ladies and gentlemen, I need your attention. Let me talk to you just briefly. Uh, I know we're going to, I know we're going to, we're going to dismiss our classes here in just a second, in just a second, in just a second. And um, please be prayerful. You hear all the things that um, are going on in the background in our world, all the noise and all the craziness all noise and all craziness that's going on and um, the shutdowns are trying to come back. They have not affected the church yet. Amen. Amen. And so we're believing that it will not happen. We will not happen. Um, I'm not going back that road with them again. I'm not doing that. Um, so be prayerful about that. Friendsgiving is this Friday at 6, is that correct? 6 p.m. this Friday. Amen. Um, and I believe that the youth are to being $5, is that right, each person, towards the Friendsgiving. Amen. So we're, we're again, excited about that. Also, they are, and I, I don't know if they've ever got anything together. I'm looking for somebody could tell me. Uh, well, not for that, but for, for uh, the boxes that we're doing for the Thanksgiving boxes. Yeah, Everything's together? I didn't ask all that. No, I'm just playing. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Go ahead, quickly. Okay, so, so here's what we're going to do. So get with her tonight, and, and she's got the items there. We need your help. Uh, amen. You're blessed. Be a blessing. And uh, here's the caveat. We need everything Sunday. We need everything Sunday because everything has to get out and to the families so they can have time. We're not cooking the meal. We're just giving them so the families can cook it. So we have to give them opportunities to cook it. Appreciate your help, man. God bless you. Amen. I believe that was uh, a brother Eric and brother Perkins and uh, and it, who and sister Sydney. And, I was gonna say the twins. So, Amen. You got me. That's good. And whoever else, I don't know. I just know they were doing putting that together, and I appreciate that. And we are all about that. So, friendsgiving this Friday. Uh, also, and and that is for um, that's actually a HCM and a youth, huh? Youth and young adult. Uh, piece right there, so y'all get with them about that, and then the boxes that we're giving away as well. I know the church is actually buying the protein for that, for the for the bags, so for the boxes. I'm sorry, for the boxes. All right, so listen, listen, listen. I need y'all to pay close attention. The clo more, quicker you be quiet, the quicker we'll get out of here in the classes. There is a heaviness in this world, and it is spilling over into the church. It's a heaviness, and that fatigue you're feeling right now, that it's not the change in the weather. It's not the change in the weather. It is a spiritual, uh, negative spiritual move trying to move in to quench the fires, to quench the fires. And, um, and we can't retreat. We, I, for those who take everything lightly and those who are patting yourself on the back because you think you're doing a great job, you're in the same boat. Please, please, please hear me. Please hear me. Please hear me. We cannot take what we're doing lightly. We can't take our prayer lightly. We can't take our praise lightly. Come on. Our worship. 
And I, I, I know we're live. I know we're live, and I'm not, I'm not worried about that because I'm not just speaking to us in here. I'm speaking collectively to the world. The church cannot lower its standard. And right. come on, the enemy desires. You're hearing, you're hearing on the news. You're listening to it, and you're hearing on the news. And they're shutting down things, and they're, and they're causing that, and they're telling you the death tolls, and they're telling you all this stuff, and that spirit of depression is trying to be forced upon the people of God to depress you from your prayer, to depress you, amen, from being the church because they realize if we can get the church to shut up like they did in March. Amen. 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 All right, I hear what I'm trying to tell you, so we can't do that. So I'm just going to ask you to check yourself. Check yourself. And I, I'm saying that from the pulpit to the patio. Check yourself. Check yourself. We've got to. We've got to. Okay? Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're going to quietly, dis I'm going to see how quiet, we're going to play the quiet game. I'm going to see how quietly we can dismiss our kids. Kids, you're dismissed quietly, 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 quietly. Amen. All right. She got, she got to make sure she had to touch the open plate. Quietly. Y'all doing a great job. Aren't they doing good? Yeah. Youth, you're dismissed. New members, you're dismissed as well. Everybody else, would you take a moment or two and fellowship one with another? while they are exiting the room. Amen. Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. As long as it's good out there, I'm good. Uh -huh. That's all right. We okay? All right. Amen. Amen. Tonight, I... Man, I do not like that somber feeling. It's something about that I just don't like. I do not like this at all. Can we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus? Come on, can you stand to your feet? Let's pray. Ah, uh, I'm not sure, dear God. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, what the enemy think he's doing. But I am here to serve him notice that he has no authority or power. God, we speak boldly right now in the name of Jesus. Let every hearer that hears this voice God, let every soul in this place and abroad, God, let them draw nigh unto you, dear God. For the enemy is desirous to sift as wheat. The enemy is desirous to destroy. But God, you're the giver of life. You're the way maker. And Lord, there's nothing impossible for you. So I bind those weighted chains uh, that are trying to get a stranglehold on the people of God. I bind that hand of the enemy uh, that's been trying to buffet uh, and push the people of God around. I come against that uh, that tried to enter in this place. Um, every witch and witchcraft, uh, amen, possessor, every demonic force. You're gone, you're out in the name of Jesus. We stand firm right now. We stand firm in the name of Jesus. Come on, you're mighty God to the pulling down of strongholds. You're mighty. You're mighty God. You're mighty God. You're mighty God. Jesus name. Jesus name. Put your hands together and praise him. And I want you to praise him like he's God. Come on, praise him like he's God. Come on and praise him. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. It's lifting. It's lifting. It's lifting. To our people, let me remind you, I know the holidays are here, but holidays, amen, should not take you away from the, what God is doing. Uh, it is unfortunate that the people of God sometimes get so caught up in the preparation for the holidays that we forget to prepare for the rapture. And I don't know the day nor the hour, but I'm here to tell you the Bible tells us to be ready. And so we can't allow those things to happen. I know we've got people that are trying to leave and go out of town. We have people who are visiting family. We have uh, all manner of things. They're closed the schools down. They're, they're doing all manner of things starting this week. And, and I know some of that is troubling your spirit, but you better be the church. Right. 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 Uh, closing a classroom should not close your mind to the Lord. Amen. Uh, they threatened to send people home to work. Somebody ought to thank God that you, you'll be able to work from your home. And, and I got a couple of people clapping. The rest of you are like, I don't know. Amen. But there is something that the Lord really, truly wants to do in our lives. And we need to, we need to really get ourselves in line with him. Amen. 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 All right, let us get on into the scriptures. Y'all got me still on the um, on the back screen. At least you still got you got me on the um, screen for the uh, prayer over the offering on the scripture for the offering. I need the scripture for uh, uh, Psalms fifty three and one. If you would read this, well, I'll read it. Amen. Uh, the Bible says the fool hath said in his heart. Please pay close attention to the text and how it is written. It did not say they said it with their mouth. Huh? Yeah, but in their heart. And that's a whole different thing because lies can proceed out of your mouth. Do you love the Lord? Yes. And their heart's far away. And so the fool have said in his heart, there is no God. If there's no God, there's no penalty. I can do what I want to do. I can act like I want to act. I can think like I want to think. Because there is no God. But the Bible has something beyond fool to call them. It says, corrupt are they and have done, listen to this, have done abominable iniquities. There is none that doeth good. So the fool who says in his heart, no matter what you think is good, you haven't done anything good. Now, I know we don't have that in here, but, but this is just a lead up to where we're going. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did what? Seek God. God saying, I want to find out if there's anybody down there that's trying to seek me now. I believe in 2020, he's probably looking down, wondering and scratching his head. Are there any people that are really seeking after my will? Or, or are they still caught on their own stuff? You better be cautious because you'll fall in the category of a fool so fast. Yeah. Every one of them is gone back. They are all together become filthy. They all backslid. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Are y'all with me? No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? In other words, do they not know better? Yeah, they do. Who eat, who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God? Verse 5. They, excuse me, they were they in great fear, where no fear was. Pay attention to what it says. They had fear where fear didn't even exist. Now, I want you to just get that in your spirit. There they, what? Had great fear where no fear was. For God hath scattered the bones of him that encamped against thee. Thou hast put them to shame because God hath what despised them. God has already taken the care of everything that could ever bring fear into your life. However, people are still afraid. Yeah. Y'all hearing me? Yeah. Proverbs 28 and 1. 
The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Ah, what do you mean? I'm running from nothing. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Today I'm going to teach to us from the subject fight or flight. Fight or flight. Amen. High five your neighbor and have a seat. Air high five them, whatever you got to do. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Uh, that's what Proverbs says. And Psalm said, there they were in great fear where no fear was. See? There is a spirit in this world that has a desire to cause us or the people of this world and the people who are in the world but not of the world, us, the church, to cause us to find ourselves questioning the validity and the power of God. You don't know that you are a person of little faith until your faith is put on trial. You don't even know you're afraid, huh? Because people can talk a big game. Have you ever met folk like that? They talk bad until they've got to put it to the test. Then all of a sudden, the reality strikes. Come on. I, 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 I remember, I remember uh, talking to uh, uh, some of the couples, some of the young couples here. They went on a, uh, a little couples trip a while ago. And then there, where they were at, there is a glass bridge. And uh, that glass bridge, you got to walk on, and you can see, like, down there. And I, I think they even got places where it looks like it's cracked. I don't know. I, I don't know. But it's there to test you to see if you can do it. And some of the baddest folk that went could not take that step. They couldn't walk out. No, I can't. No, no, I can see what's down there. It might not hold. Now, thousands of people have gone before you. But something about when it's time for you to step out on that, there is something that will get on you and say, oh, I don't know if I can make it or not. And because of that, because of that, uh, fear in it in right then. Has anybody ever been afraid of anything? Yeah, afraid. Uh, come on, y'all better tell the truth. Yeah. I, I, I know some of you, and I know right now that uh, uh, from, 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 from experience, when uh, we, we, we used to have little church mice at the old building, and uh, I remember one a mouse would run, the man would be sitting on the back of the chair. I never understood it. What are you, what are you scared of? And see, and the sisters would be all climbed up in there, and the brothers be on. I'm like, what in the world? Because fear, fear. When you face with something that you don't think you're afraid of, all of a sudden, reality hits. And the enemy understands that sometimes we testify a great game. We talk a lot of stuff. Off. And he says, I'm going to try you right away. Now, don't get tight now and say, I'm not going to testify no more because I don't want to be tried on it. Uh, somebody just ought to just let the devil know, do your best. Because your best still can't compare to what God can do to you. Uh -uh. And so here we have two type of people in Proverbs. We have the wicked and we have the righteous. We have the fighters, which would be the righteous, and we have the fleers, which would be the, the wicked. The, the wicked are always trying to escape from where God is bringing them to. Uh, the wicked are always afraid about what God is doing for them. Uh, they're afraid of going through the test. That's the wicked. But the, the righteous are saying, uh, go ahead and put us in the furnace. I, 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 if God don't deliver me, I know he can. It's not, it's not whether he will or not. It's the fact that I know that he can. I didn't hear none of them say that I'm not going to go. I didn't hear nobody back out and say, well, hold on. Let me, let me go back and bow to the idol. Let me go 
back the other way. No, because that's what the wicked were doing. But, but the righteous says, I'm going to stand here and fight anyhow. The odds are against me. I'm still going to fight. It looks like I don't have anybody on my side. I'm still going to fight. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to give up. I know they only gave me six weeks to live, but it's going to be the best six weeks of my life. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to quit. Why? Because if I succumb to what the wicked say, I'll become what the wicked want me to become. And that is a fool that says in my heart, there is no God. Do I have any fighters in here? Uh, the good news, the good news is uh, uh, that the, the righteous are bold as a lion, but the wicked flee. That ought to tell you something, that the enemy has already laced up his track shoes and is on his way out. Why? Because when you stand up against the devil, the devil has to leave. The Bible says resist him and he will flee. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, he'll stick around for a while and he'll mess with, no, he has to flee. You see, so it's time out for letting the world dictate whether or not you're going to be righteous or not. They don't have the power to do that. They, they, can't, they can't pass a law to stop you from being saved. They, uh, they can try to interfere, but they have no authority uh, because greater is he that is in you than he. Don't y'all just use that as some little go-to verse. Uh, you better use that with authority and let the devil know greater is he that is in me because because watch out now, it's said that the righteous are bold as a lion. In other words, I'm not afraid in the midst of quiet to give a roar in the middle of the place. I taught on the lions a while ago and I told y'all the lion usually roars its most at night. Just before lying down to let the enemy know don't even think you can come in here. Roar. I'm right here. Oh, you can't even mess with me in the dark because I'll see you coming. I'm on my post. Why? Because I'm bold enough to let you know that I'll uh, come on the lion let him know I already know uh, I'm the king of the jungle uh, but I'm here to speak to you uh, you royal priesthood uh, you better let the devil know uh, that you rule this place with the power of God and so it goes on and it says it simplistically the wicked flee where no man pursueth let me give you an understanding of why Huh? Because the conscience of their own guilt puts them into a continual uh, expectation of dread. They already feel like failures. They already feel like what the world has told them all their life is not going to work for you. God will never help you. It'll never be your turn. You're stupid. You're dumb. You're ugly. You're broke. Come on, somebody. That's what the devil been telling you. You. You're never going to find anybody in your life. Nobody's going to fulfill. Nobody's going to bless you. It's never going to happen. Your day is never going to come. You're sick and you're going to die. So the enemy keeps saying that and so we run. And the enemy doesn't even bother to chase. don't even have to come after you because he wasn't trying to chase you. He was trying to scare you out. And so all of a sudden you transition from the righteous for the righteous have something that the wicked don't. The righteous, they are continually staying steadfast in a place where they're unmovable. They're courageous 
and resolute. Been through the storm. Come through the battle. Been through some things. Come on, got some battle wounds. Know that they know that they know that the promises of God are in their future and their destiny is not a loser but a winner. Their destiny is no longer the tail but the head. Their destiny. And so the righteous understand that when I think I'm alone, there's more that are for us than against us. When times get troubled and the enemy comes in with all that noise, seeking who he may devour, my God hasn't left and never lost a battle. He's right there with me. Why? Because he said that I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. So I'm standing in that place knowing that the enemy cannot there's a tenacity about people uh, that understand the fact that they have divine favor because they're favored uh, and because of that they're not only favored uh, they're protected uh, and because they're protected uh, somebody ought to hear me now uh, you're untouchable uh, the enemy cannot touch you uh, he can scream from the sidelines uh, he can put all kind of mess before your eyes uh, but he cannot touch you uh, you better hear what I'm trying to tell you the devil been trying to tell you he got you you can't get me uh, I'm on the highway of holiness and no devils allowed up here don't let him okie doke you out because once you run out from under the cover you're subject to those things that he has for you and so he tries to offend you he tries to make you angry he tries to frustrate us he, he tries to make us deny God he tries to make us deny that we were ever born again uh, he tries to make us deny that that speaking in tongues we did he tells you that was fake that wasn't even real he tries why to get you to run away Yes, he is. The enemy is a liar because we have a great constellation, a constellation. Uh, we have a great advocate. We have a great God on our side. And though he lie on us, there's nothing that can affect us for we are covered in the blood of Jesus. Uh-huh. And so there's some boldness that has to be applied in our lives. There's some things that have to be applied, and we have to encourage ourselves. And do I have any people in this place that sometimes have felt like you were just going through the motions and felt like it wasn't achieving the goal that you thought it would achieve? Do I have any witnesses in here that are honest enough to say that that prayer you've been praying is getting kind of tired now? I've been praying they get saved, so then they ain't got saved yet. Been praying that the finances would come, and they ain't come yet. Still praying it, but it ain't happening. So the devil said, run away from that prayer. Don't, don't pray that no more because that very next prayer you're about to pray is the one that's going to bring the change in your life. So he, he, he tried to get you to join Team Darkness, Team Devilment. He tried to get you to join Team Lost. 
team bound, team sick. And God says, stay right where you are. When you've done all to stand, stand there for. When I told you to just show up, show up and watch and see the salvation of the Lord. I told you, don't you dare. I've already equipped you with all the armament that you need. And the one part that's not covered is your back. Why? Because the people of God don't retreat. We don't run from a fight. We stand bold like a lion. No, there ain't nothing that can tear me down. There's nothing that can come against us. Why? Because we are the king's king. Yeah, so we, so we get an understanding here. We get an understanding that we have a choice in life. In every, everything in our life, we have a choice to fight or to run. We have a choice to be bold in our faith or bold in our excuses. Oh, uh, we have the ability to stand firm or allow something to stand on us. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, I like things in order. The Bible lets me know that the enemy is my footstool. Get under my feet, not on my back. You have no authority to ride my back. You have no authority to get in my mind. The only authority that you have is to be down there with a big bruise on the back of your head. Hallelujah from a hill of my daddy. You don't have no authority in my life. So how dare I run away from what you say? You know why the devil don't have to chase you? Because he can't. His job is to get in your mind and make you do the work. <laughs> you see, he'll cause you to run away from God. Amen. He ain't even got to fight you. He just gets in your mind. And the devil will speak into your life and say, you're crazy. You're off. You, you've got this and you've got that wrong with you. And, and because of this and that, I've got you right where I want you. Some people are afraid to go to sleep because you don't want to dream because the enemy has been trying to attack you in your dream. Oh, don't worry about that, baby. Anoint your pillow and tell the devil, come on. I'm, I'm not just going to sleep tonight. We're about to go into some battle. Come on, you're going to mess with me in my sleep. You're going to try to tip in my room tonight I got a battle for you one thing I learned a long time ago a long time ago a long time ago as a kid I learned this a long time ago the average bully whether they can beat you or not huh is not the point they could be three times your size stronger than you they can do that out battle you, out war you, probably got five black belts. And here you are just as meek and mild. But one thing even bullies understand, they're looking for a soft target. <laughs> You may whip me. I, I, I used to tell him, Brother Perkins, I said, you might whip me today, but you're going to remember you was in a fight. You might wear me You might wear me out, but wait a minute. That was when I was fighting in the flesh, but my weapons aren't fleshy now. My weapons are spiritual, and guess what? Devil, I'm not afraid. Get as big as you want to get. Come on. Goliath came down with a little rock. My God will bring you down and embarrass you right in front of all your demonic friends. Devil don't want to fight. <laughs> he don't want to fight. He just be messing with you. He really don't want to fight you. Because he already know. <laughs> You got a couple of eye jammies. You got a couple of bricks to hit him in the head with. He already knows. He's already the experience. He tried it with your brother. He, he tried it with your sister. And they busted his behind. So now he tries you. And then all of a sudden. Ah, you used to run. But even if you get.
hit a scared animal in a corner. We know that mouse know he can't beat a lion. That mouse know, but if you corner him, lion, I may be your dinner, but guess what? I'm going to scratch the mess out of you. You're going to wear the scars of this beating. The good news is every time the enemy tries to act up, he's got you backed in a corner and you feel like you can't get out. All you do is ball your Holy Ghost fist up and you begin to call on the name of Jesus and right out of your corner you will find there are angels all about you and the devil, the wicked one is running and you and the angels are having a Holy Ghost party because I'm not worried about chasing a devil. I'm just sending the devil out. Wicked, that's what you do. Uh, you see, you see, so he wants to get I, I, I'm trying to teach this tonight, y'all behave. The wicked flee. Can you say the wicked flee? Here in the text is a singular noun with plural verb. They all flee. <laughs> Not some. They all flee. <laughs> Uh, oh, no, 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 no. He can bring his legion with him, but guess what? Uh, they all flee. Uh, y'all y'all missing that. Uh, don't think you outnumbered, baby. They all shall flee. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm loving it. Because you see the difference in the wicked, they are singular noun with a plural verb, but the righteous are a plural noun with the singular verb. Are you hearing me? It kind of switches its text and it says, they are each individually bold as a lion. What I'm trying to tell you is, uh, Sister Shayla, if you're sitting with Sister Trinity and she seems a little off, not that you are, I don't need her to be on for me to be bold. I don't need a high five from my neighbor to be bold. I don't need you to agree with me to be bold. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. I don't need an amen section for me to be bold. I can stand in the midst of a mess all by myself uh, and understand uh, that I'm bold with it. You in your classroom, in your classroom, college, college students. You in there with all that devilment they trying to force down and force feed you. And they in there trying to tell you, uh, hallelujah, that what the Bible calls sin is okay. Uh, they in there trying to outnumber you. Uh, and you get a little timid because you're the only one that's going to stand up for righteous. Uh, and God gives you a little nudge. Uh, and you begin to open your mouth. Uh, and they begin to roll their eyes. Uh, but something happens in the room. Uh, the devil already knows he's defeated. The devil already knows And he begins to leave the room And they act like they got a fight for you baby But they don't have a fight at all You see because the bold don't run Y'all need Y'all need Y'all need to walk into the joint like brother Shanti does Yo, pray attention to Brother Shawnee Walk. He ain't, I ain't worried about the thing. What's happening? <laughs> it don't matter what's cracking. I got this. Uh oh, they gonna do what? <laughs> Watch out. Uh oh, they gonna, they gonna outlaw worship? <laughs> Watch this. Uh, I'm not concerned uh, with what you trying to tell me. Uh, uh, they gonna lock the churches down, really? Uh, you can't lock the church down. Uh, the church uh, is an organism, uh, not an organization. Uh, you lock a building door, we'll have church, uh, hallelujah, on the courthouse step. You better not try me. I'm here to tell you, we'll call a revival meeting at the White House. Uh, yeah. Oh, That's bold. You're just talking crazy, brother. You're not going to do none of that. Do you think I'm scared of you telling me I'm not going to do something? 
Do you think because it doesn't seem feasible or pliable to you that it's not going to happen? because it doesn't seem feasible to build that building next door that I'm going to hear what the devil says. Do you think when we drive by our building that I believe that God told us is ours and they've got some dump trucks over there and they've got some construction equipment over there tearing it down or doing whatever they're doing with it. You think that it looks like it ain't going to be ours, baby. All they're doing is tearing up the ground, building a place that we don't have to rebuild. You better understand what I'm saying. I'm bold enough to let them no, devil, what you think is yours is not yours. What God says is mine. It is mine. You got to be bold enough to declare the impossible in the face of the wicked. It's easy to testify in church. <laughs> Sometimes. But sometimes the church folk look at you funny. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes church folk say, that, that's impossible. Why would God do that? Because <laughs> everybody's faith ain't the same. There, there, there's some, that, come on, there's some that got one army boot on and one track shoe on. Ready to run and maybe ready to fight. And so we got to get to a place where we get greater understanding of what God is trying to do in our lives. He's trying to teach us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He's trying to teach us how to maintain. He's trying to teach us how to stay powerful. He's trying to teach us. I heard, uh, and, 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 and I'm not saying this for the uh, trying to get an amen or trying to get an emotional rise, but... I heard Brother Josh was saying that the ministers were told to have a 500-person revival individually. And the prophet spoke that, and so 500 individually. And then, and, and then I heard him remind them today. And that don't make good sense to most people. How are you going to have a 500-person revival by yourself? How, how you, really what he was saying is you're going to add 500 people to the church. And, and the thing is, is that, uh, you know, as you sow, as you do the work of God, as you, you do that, uh, amen, you, 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 might, you might turn around uh, and hit a Cornelius along the way. And here comes a hundred right there. And uh, you might move over here. And here's a, see, the devil tell you it ain't going to happen in your life. Uh, the devil says you don't have enough time to do that. Uh, you might just be in the middle of a prayer walking down Main Street uh, and look behind you. And there's a whole trail of people walking behind you. That, why y'all? follow him I don't know but there's something about what he's saying and so we have to we have to live this way even when it doesn't look feasible when it doesn't look possible and when it makes no sense to man we've got to do it for more uh, brother Marcus had a 2500 person and for those that don't know he is trying his best to get back to his wife and children. No, not children. We, we ain't got none of them yet, huh? Yeah, we were speaking prophetically, and he's trying to get back to his wife. And, and, uh, and so with that, and, you know, COVID has put a little damper in his ability to travel back. But God's about to do that for him. And, and listen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's a revival waiting on him in the Philippines. And <clears throat> mm. 
but he ain't waiting until he get to the Philippines to make it happen. Somebody better hear me. You better stop waiting for the door to open. You start having revival while the door is shut. Because boldness stands before a locked door. <laughs> you think you're going to keep me out of here? You're not allowed. No, no, no. Wait a minute. God can keep it locked. Don't get me wrong. But what God unlocks and opens, the devil can't shut. And if it's already my pro I'm standing right here. Bo, why are you there? Huh? That door ain't ever going to open for you. Watch. You've been standing there for years. It don't matter how long I've been standing there. I know it's going to open. And when it opens, stop it. I'm going to be the first. Come on. I'm not. Come on. If I was sick and there was a pool that the angel was going to trouble once a year, I understand why the layman didn't get in because there were some bold folk there saying, get back, Jack. I was like, he didn't have nobody put him in. I'm here to tell you, the next time y'all bring me, don't bring me and sit me that far away. Bring me where I can just flop a hand in there. Uh, bring me. I, I, I'm not, why? I'm both. They're going to step on you. I, I, look, you might drown. Uh, if I drown, let me drown. I'm going to be right where I need to be. So you don't want to wait. You can be seated. God bless you. I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. I don't want to be the fleer. I don't want to be the one that run away. Anybody, anybody ever experienced disappointment? Anybody? Raise your hand if you've ever been disappointed in your life, in your saved life. Disappointed, disappointed. You know you anointed your test paper and, and didn't get the A? Well, you should have studied too. But I don't know. <laughs> but I was in prayer meeting. I couldn't study. <laughs> Amen. So you got the A minus. Amen. God bless you. Uh, disappointed in life. Disappointed because you're hoping. You knew this would be the day. You knew this is the day that your family was coming in. You knew they were getting baptized. You just knew. And they came and they left. And they didn't do the thing. And you're just disappointed. You've been praying for this to happen or that to happen. You were praying that your bills would get paid and the lights got cut off. Just disappointed. And my question to us is. Can we praise him in the midst of not yet as if it was so? Or do we flee to our corner of depression? What do we do? What do we do? Do we wait for the door to be open? Do we save up our praise? Don't spend my praise now. I got to save my praise. I, no, I can't use it now. I got to keep enough for over there. Well, let me tell you something. Your praises over here are setting up stuff over there. You just look silly. Would you stop that? You just look dumb. You, you just worshiping. You just making all that noise. And ain't nothing working for you. You still poor. You still busted. You still disgusted. You still don't have. It still hasn't happened. Oh, quit all that noise. But what they don't understand is if I shut up now, I lose the momentum I'm going to have when I get I done told you the old folks knew what they were saying. Uh, don't wait till the battle is over. I've got to learn to be bold uh, before I get to the finish line. I'm not going to celebrate when I get there if I couldn't celebrate along the way. Ah, somebody, I'm going to dance in heaven. Not if you're not dancing down here.
I'd like to ask somebody in this place right now. Are you going to dribble? Are you going to shoot? I want to ask somebody in this place right now. Are you just going to pout and go home? Or are you going to beat that devil up in this place before? Come on. I'm going to ask somebody in this place. Are you going to reject the will of God? Are you going to dive head first in the midst of the will of God? Shut the church down again. I done told y'all. <laughs> you can't shut down what you don't have the authority to shut down. Only eight people at your Thanksgiving dinner now. Only eight people. Who are you? Somebody, somebody said, well, we're just going to have a wedding because it's 25 for a wedding. We're just going to go ahead and have a wedding. We said, <laughs> oh, I'm going to get, they're going to talk about me now. <laughs> they need to quit lying. <laughs> they said in one state they were checking the size of the turkey you bought. Y'all go out and buy the biggest turkey you can. And you're, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't lost their mind. <laughs> That's with the people of God. Second Timothy, y'all, y'all behave. Y'all gonna get us banned off of Facebook again. <laughs> we just got out of Facebook jail. They <laughs> have us back in. Second Timothy one and verse six is this: Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. Remind yourself. Right? Because here's an issue. Why would the scripture be written? Why would it be written? I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God. Why do you have to stir it up? Because the enemy, just like a regular well, the Bible says rivers of living water, just like a well, if it's not attended to, it will become stagnant and or become, watch out now, trash will be piled upon it and the water cannot flow. So every now and then you have to stir it up. And by causing the agitation, you cause a refreshing and a renewing. No, 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 please, please don't just, don't, don't just skate past this. You cause a refreshing and renewing in yourself. Because there's times, I'm here to tell you, I'm human, uh, believe it or not, and I, I know that you all are. And there are times when things just get on us. You'll feel your head dropping. You'll feel fatigue all on you. You know you ought to pray. But you don't feel like it. Oh, no, no. I, everybody in here is just a prayer warrior. You always. And the enemy just begins to pow. Did you hear this news? Uh, another bill? You know, how you, you know how some of us don't want to go check our mailboxes because you know there's a bill out there? We act like because we don't look at it, it ain't going to be there. And here it comes with this. And right when you had enough money to do this, here comes a flat tire. And here comes this. And big mama called and said this happened and that happened. And they called over here and said this. And the job scene, we're thinking about laying off. And you get, you, you're all wore down and you beat up. And so all that is, is debris trying to stop up. Huh? That river of living water in you. So every now and then you've got to stir up. Come on, the gift of God. You've got to activate what has been lying dormant for a season, even when you don't feel it working. 
You missed that. That means, Sister Angie, that you got to pray with tenacity when the back of your head is pounding and ain't nothing seem like it's working for you. You got to get up and worship him even when your back is out of whack and your money is funny. You, you got to get some stuff going. Why? Because if I lay here, I'll die. But if I get up, I shall live. The enemy tries to overcome you and cause you to be afraid shame tries to take over somebody said I didn't pray enough so that's why things are not going well in my life as if that makes a difference I'm all for prayer but don't you let shame climb on top of you and tell you you didn't do a good enough job our job is to do the best that we can and if we can't do it then to get it right but if we stay in the bed of shame that will get on us and it will cause us to become wicked in our think as a man thinketh so is he God forget me God don't love me God wouldn't let me go through this if he was real and all of a sudden we can be sitting in church and clapping our hands and and we can be dancing and acting like everything is all right on the exterior but inside our heart we say there is no God it's never going to happen for me we become foolish in our flesh you can dance in church, but keep playing on the outside. Why? Because we try to fix it for ourselves. And God is trying to tell you, no, 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 no. You praise me just like I bless you when it seems like I'm cursing you. You get an understanding like Job said, though you slay me, come on, yet will I trust you. Although my world is jacked up, I'm still going to worship you. Why? because I'm not going to allow that spirit to climb down inside of me and when I feel the attack coming I'm going to stir up the gift sometimes you just got to prophesy over yourself in your situation Stop waiting for the preacher to prophesy in your life sometimes you got to prophesy over yourself Well, that's crazy. No, baby, that's bold. That's boldness. You see, we have to get our minds together and understand that staring up that gift is not a suggestion. <laughs> but it was an order. Wherefore, I put you back in remembrance. I mean, in other words, I told you before, and I'm telling you again, stir up the gift which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Ah, you hear me? For God hath not given us the spirit of timidity, of fear. He has not given us a spirit of retreat. We fight. We don't flee. Sister Kelly, I don't care who agrees with what God is doing in your life. You stand on the word of God. You stand right there and you understand it and you prophesy over it and you tell the devil he has no authority in your life, in your children's life. And when it feels like uh, maybe not, uh, you get back to your prayer closet uh, and just begin to stir it up. I'm talking about every now and then you got to go back. Uh, and this don't apply to everybody in here. Uh, but some of you will get it. Uh, you got to get back in that place where the bobby pins are flying. Uh, you got to get back in the place. Uh, hey man, where some of them tracks are popping out. Uh, you got to get back in that place where that wig is flying off. Uh, you got to get back in that place. Uh, come on sisters with things. Uh, glasses are just... <laughs> <laughs> 
all fogged up. You got to get back in that place. There's something on the inside, working on the outside, bringing about a change in my life. There's something on the inside, working on the outside. Bring it, come on. What you see on the outside is a reflection of what's going on in the inside. Never let the outside determine uh, what's going on on the inside. Uh, but let the inside uh, change the atmosphere uh, of your outside. <laughs> God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind uh, my mind's made up my mind's made up I'm not going back my mind's made up God has brought me too far for me to leave him God done too much for me to turn back now my mind's made up Now let me talk to you right now. Be not, be thou therefore, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction. Here's what, here's what he's saying to Timothy. Let me help you, son. They're talking about me because it looks like I'm in chains. But what it looks like on the outside has nothing to do with what's going on on the inside. Oh, yeah, Timothy, don't be ashamed because they got me. I run my race. I finished my course. My time is about over. But what I'm telling you to do, when it gets down, I want you to stay Tear it back up. Don't be ashamed when they say, what happened to your partner? My partner kept the faith. My father, my partner finished the course. My partner has a crown of righteousness laid up. Don't you be ashamed of this gospel. Don't you be ashamed of what God did for you. Stop hiding it. Stop going home and compromising. Stop hiding it. Well, I don't want I just don't want to make them feel any kind of way. You better make them feel some kind of way. You better set a standard before them. If they if you don't, who will? And so be. Not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partakers, be part of it, of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Now please understand, that doesn't sound fun. But what it says, you in the power of God. Who have saved us? Oh, in the power of who? God. Who have saved us? And call us with a holy, not any kind of calling, sisters and brothers, uh, but a holy calling, not according to our works. In other words, you couldn't have prayed enough to get this thing. Oh, y'all not hearing me. You couldn't have worshiped enough to get what God gave you. Our worship and our prayers and those things are because we love him, not because I just want stuff from him. Why do you love him? Because he first. Ah, uh, y'all better get it right now, huh? Not because of your works, you didn't give enough tithes. You can't give enough tithes. You can't give enough offering. Silver and gold <laughs> can't buy your way into the kingdom. You can't get in by that. 
Oh, y'all better watch out in this place. But you've got to learn that in your broken state, you're really in your best state. When you're messed up, when you feel locked down and bound down, that's when you have got the closest walk with God. And you can lift up a holy voice then. It's easy to clap your hands when you got money in the bank. It's easy to run the aisles when everything's going your way. It's easy to shout hallelujah when you just got engaged. It's easy to do all that then. But what about when the engagement breaks off? What about when the money dries out? What about when the family walk out on you? What about when the job lets you go? What about when bankruptcy hits you? Can you still shout then. Can you still praise him then? What about when you thought you were getting an A but you ended up with a fail? What about then? Can you still praise him? Are you bold enough to give him the glory even in the midst of your death sentence? Not when you've been healed but before High five your neighbors and go ahead and stir it up. Ah, uh, come on. You need to wake some stuff up. Knock some dust off of that stuff. Ah, uh, come on. You came in a little dry today. You came in a little heavy today. Let me help you knock some of that off of you. God wants to do a work in you today. Come on, why don't you just begin to prophesy to somebody next to you. Let them know how much God loves them and where he's about to take them to. Now let me tell you why you're doing what you're doing. Let me help you with this. Because not only did he call us with a holy calling, not because of what we did, but according to his purpose. There's a purpose in your life. There's some grace that has been added into your life. Why? Because he understood who you were before you knew who you were. He understood what you were going to be before mama or daddy even knew you were coming. Y'all better hear me. Which was given us in Christ uh, before before the world began why am I bold uh, because he's Alpha and Omega he's way back in the beginning uh, and he's all the way in the Why am I going to fight? Because I can't lose. Why am I going to stay in the fight? Because it's already done. Why in the world would I back down now? Why would I throw it in reverse now? If he already brought me to it. There's a through it on my way. There's a destiny beyond. Hallelujah, where you got me now. The shipwreck didn't take him out. The snake biting him didn't take him out. The whips didn't take him out. Paul had to get to Rome. He understood I can't stop now. Let me talk to you in this place. You won't be done till God's done. With the mission he has in you. Stay the course. Stay the course. Stay the course. The Bible says, choose ye this day who you will serve. I'm going to say it like this. Choose whether you're going to fight or are you going to flee. You choose whether you're going to fight or are you going to flee. It's fight or flight. I choose to fight, sisters and brothers. I'm not going to run from a defeated foe. I will not bow to a devil that has no teeth. I'm not going to allow the enemy to say nothing to me that's going to cause me to stop. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. (laughs) 
Come on. 1 John 4. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. You don't, don't let that slip you. As he, uh, what? Is, so are we. Uh, you better hear me the same spirit uh, that raised Jesus uh, is the same spirit uh, that is quickening your mortal body uh, the same Holy Ghost uh, hallelujah that he had is the same Holy Ghost that you you better hear what I'm trying to tell you in this house Verse 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. That's what God is not tormenting you. That's not God tormenting you. That's timidity. That's fear that's climbing all on you. God's are not bringing that kind of fear on you. Come on, somebody, get it in your spirit right now. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. In other words, fall back in love with God and stop worrying about it. Take no thought for tomorrow for tomorrow is already taken care of it's already done he is in our beginning right now and in our tomorrow he already knows it's already I'm not afraid of what tomorrow holds because my God is still God yesterday and he's my God today and he'll be my God forevermore So we love him because he first loved us. I don't care what it looks like. I, I don't care what the symptom is. I don't care what it appears to people. I'm bold in my faith. I'm bold. But I ain't been saved long enough. I don't know the books of the Bible. All I know is Jesus and him crucified. All I know is what he did for me. I came to a meeting one night and my soul wasn't right. In the middle of that service, something got a, I don't know a whole lot, but that's all I know. I'm kind of off in my doctrine. I don't really get it all yet. I haven't figured holiness out yet. I'm still battling and wrestling with some things. I'm talking to the Apollos in here. I'm talking to those who speak boldly even though you don't know a whole lot. I'm trying to get that spirit on you right now. Stop looking at your credentials. Stop looking in your pocket for a license. Stop worrying about what everybody else is saying. If they're not doing it, step up and be bold in your faith.
Come on, I got more. I got quite a bit more. But I believe there's some people in here that need to revive some things. I believe that there's some wells. They're not dry as you suppose. The enemy has just tried to clog them up. I believe that there's some people in here that haven't had a real breakthrough in a while because your mind has been perplexed with this and that and the other. But God is trying to help you today at this service right now to stir up that gift, to take a moment out of your life, to change the rest of your life. Come on. Overcome that weight. Overcome that sickness. Overcome that lie that's been spoken in your life. Overcome it. Come on, that's it. That's it. Come on. Come on, that's it, that's it. Come on. Come on, I'm talking to that one in here, two in here. That are struggling right now. I'm not trying to get you bodily exercised by this. But I'm trying to help you right where you are right now. If you've been battling in your faith, you've been wrestling. If you're even feeling self-sanctified, I'm going to ask you to come down to the front if that's you. If it's not you, I'm not asking you. I'm asking those who are willing to admit that you've been going through a little something. and Your praise has been hindered. Your prayer has been hindered. If that's you, I want you to come down. But I don't want you to come down here waiting for me to pray over you. I want you to come down here and I want you to give God your best praise. Come on, like it's already happened. You're standing at that door right now. You're standing before that door that keeps telling you no. You're standing right there boldly in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, door. You're not going to stop me much longer because my God is the door. He's got the key. It's about to be open. Come on. I want you to get ugly with it. Your blessings on the other side of that door. Come on, your blessings on the other side. Come on, your destiny is waiting on you right there. Would you put all your effort in it? Come on, give me my praise back. Give me my joy back. Give me my mind back. Y'all can cut the live stream. You're good. Y'all can come out. If you need to come out of there and worship, cut the live stream and come on. Oh, come on in the name of Jesus. Don't stay in the dead zone no longer. I won't stay in the dead zone no longer. I will not. I'm going to be bold right here in this place. 